Hello and good morning listeners. It's the fresh beginning of the week with Almas Market Mornings and the fresh brew of updates from the global financial markets. Over the weekend, we had some political action again, obviously because we had some lack of uh, macroeconomic data this week and the Wagner Group attempted a coup in the Russia, which was settled within 24 hours. Now, there are multiple views about this coup, but quite a prominent one circling is the possibility of a stage drama. So JK, we will need your experience and your expert advice in understanding this whole event. Meanwhile, if we talk about the economics, the uh, Europe released a set of uh, economic indicators yes, uh, last week, majorly the PMIs, which showed the increased recession possibilities. So. Uh, as we talk on the politics, JK, we will need also an update on the expectations from the global economy apart from the uh, Russian mutiny as well. So, JK, what to you? Hey, good morning, uh, Shikhar. Yes, uh, I think the weekend was... Uh, uh, weekend uh, drew more attention to the screens than the trading days last week. Uh, so, because of the happening is in Russia. So, basically, a part of the Russian army uh, was on a rebellion. Uh, this is uh, in view of uh, certain policies uh, uh, from their uh, defense minister as uh, reported by the agencies. So, uh, it, but it's good that it stopped short of uh, anything major uh, and uh, a re you know, further uh, coup attempt uh, was uh, averted uh, in time uh, after a compromise deal was uh, struck between uh, the uh, government and the rebel uh, forces. But uh, yeah, I mean, to that extent, there is no uh, implications for the market and markets are uh, like, you know, business as usual today. However, uh, it does raise the question whether internally Putin's uh, power has uh, diminished because of, uh, you know, uh, part of their forces being not in alignment and also whether the war itself takes a back foot in the coming months or weeks is what something that uh, uh, we need to observe. And that is something we will not get an answer for uh, immediately. Uh, but yes, everybody in the world will be watching out. If we do see, uh, you know, uh, some sort of a uh, relief on the war front, uh, uh, it will be good for overall global risk sentiment. Although, uh, if we do see, I mean, I may be speaking a bit too early, but if we do see sanctions uh, being, you know, uh, reversed, then India may be at a disadvantage because we'll stop getting uh, the uh, discounted Russian oil. Uh, but that's uh, not on the radar right now. We just observe how uh, Putin's uh, power uh, plays out in the coming months. Uh, yeah, on the economic side, yes, we had uh, the PMIs uh, from major economies on uh, uh, Friday. And, uh, you know, across the board, there was a moderation in uh, the PMI readings in the US, Eurozone, as well as in the UK. UK much less compared to Europe, but Europe is definitely uh, feeling the stress. And uh, in fact, the Russian uh, uh, services PMI uh, fell drastically to uh, 48 uh, from above 50. And that is uh, uh, actually pulled down the overall uh, you know, PMI number for services in the Eurozone as well. So if, if we recall, the services has been holding up the economic activity uh, broadly, uh, even though manufacturing has been uh, contracting for several months now. And uh, that that is a definite worry for the policy makers or for the government. Uh, the ECB obviously now July is a certainty as far as the rate hike is concerned by 0.25%. But now more and more voices are expressing that, you know, in September is still up for, you know, a discussion and uh, depends on how data comes about. Uh, see, one should remember also that their inflation is above 6%, whether they want to uh, focus on price stability still or at the sacrifice of growth or whether they would like to go for a skip for a pause just like uh, the Fed did is something that uh, we will be uh, watching out for. In the US also, uh, you know, business activities did fall to a three month low. Uh, manufacturing continues to be in contraction territory, much lower at 46.3 from 48.4. Services act also uh, you know, decelerated, but not to the same extent as in the uh, Eurozone. And we, we should recall that the ISM survey of last month indicated manufacturing 
continuing to contract and services just held above the contraction territory at 50.3. Uh, in Europe, uh, sorry, in UK, uh, sorry, uh, retail sales volume were also better than expected. So uh, something that the government may be happy about, but uh, uh, it's not very certain, you know, how long it will hold up uh, because it does appear that the uh, uh, suppliers are able to increase their prices and, uh, uh, with, you know, without higher wages can the uh, uh, consumers continue to support the, uh, you know, demand is something that uh, uh, we have to look for. In fact, the UK economy is faced with a wage price spiral, uh, you know, a theory according to which the workers bargain for higher wages, then higher demand comes through pushing companies to raise prices and once again wages being demanded higher so this is a very uh, you know vicious cycle and a very negative cycle for the economy which is what uh, the bank of england should be uh, looking at and i think once again uh, the policy maker is uh, in a very big quandary like you know uh, high inflation highest among the developed nations at 8.7 percent should they be uh, ignoring it and uh, going slow on rate hikes or whether they should uh, you know, uh, take care of the economy, which can uh, suddenly dip into a recession. Meanwhile, we have seen the uh, yield curve inversions uh, across these three major economies. And in US, it is at uh, minus 110, sorry, 102 basis points, which is not very far from the lowest level that was seen earlier in the year. Uh, markets have, uh, you know, been quite a sedate in the last few sessions and particularly equity markets we have seen some profit taking and that definitely is after a large run up we had in the earlier months of the year and uh, uh, now because there is a bit of uncertainty about the policies going forward equity players are also you know just about taking some money off the table bond yields as i said uh, the yield curve inversion meant that you know short term yields went up and the long term yields uh, came down uh, in the us and in europe of course uh, yields came down you know substantially for the 10 year a two year went up margin very marginally uh, therefore uh, uh, the yield advantage of europe is definitely coming down and that explains the reason for euro actually dropping through 1.09 at one point of time uh, you know not hold uh, not able not really able to hold on to its uh, previous gains uh, i know as more and more uh, investors get uh, conscious of the slowing economy and possible possible skip or pass by the ecb uh, in the coming months, uh, maybe leading to more profit taking on the euros. Uh, definitely, euro is an underperformer among the G3 uh, currencies. And uh, on the yen, of course, uh, we did have a new uh, high being made uh, of the you know the last six months. And uh, now, importantly, we have seen no verbal major verbal intervention. What we had seen at 141, 142. And that probably may be making the market more complacent. And uh, what I have seen also over the years is that when they stop talking, that is when they are ready to act. So uh, we, we really need to see at above, if it starts going above 144 or 145, there's a real risk of uh, uh, actual intervention selling by the Bank of Japan uh, to curb the uh, yen's uh, weakness. And uh, of course, as we have uh, uh, you know, understood from the Tankan reports of Japan last month, uh, the importers' pricing of their products uh, uh, in the dollar is at uh, 131, 132, and now at 142, they are all under a major loss. And that may be something that the government will be mindful of because it's all large garbage that we have been talking about. So overall dollar is in a range, uh, uh, not uh, having uh, immediate uh, big factors to play out, uh, but yes, in the coming weeks, we will have more clues on the uh, policy, uh, you know, monetary policy, which should be helpful, you know, in setting some direction. I think yen is the only potential currency, which will be a big mover. Otherwise, I see a more sedate uh, day ahead. On the USDNR, it was another very narrow range trading, but uh, from, uh, definitely lots of, uh, uh, you know, supplies around, though FI number was uh, slightly negative, but I think we are now more focused on the corporate fundraisers and also the direct investments which is being sold and uh, uh, without the heavy hand of RBI intervention, uh, the rate could easily step below 8190. And also looking at the number of uh, deals that the country is uh, signing with the uh, US in the coming months, 
uh, uh, during our PM's visit, I think uh, the supplies are going to be humongous. And uh, yes, uh, I think uh, RBI has its job on its hands and uh, we have to really see whether the rupee will find its level or whether central bank continues to influence it. Thank you. Okay, JK, that was quite good. And yes, folks, I mean, uh, the kind of actions that we are observing in the global financial markets with the Russia mutiny, there are uh, quite a lot of questions which are being posed, uh, whether this particular action brings about or takes uh, the war on a backseat and which is kind of positive for the global economy, or is there any change in the power dynamics in Russia? Now, this is something that time will tell. But on the macro front, if we have to see the services uh, sector has been holding the economy for a while and the moderation in this sector can uh, re make us revisit the central bank worries. If we have to talk about this uh, worrisome uh, central bank actionables, then BOJ must be having a lot of things to ponder on with the imported inflation having their impact on the economy. On the UK side, if we have to talk about the greed inflation, uh, is something that we are uh, hearing uh, a lot lately and it's something new that uh, is being talked about in the UK economy and to crack down on this the PM uh, Rishi Sunak signaled their actions to tame this inflation cycle and crack down on this vicious circle by uh, actually taking on to the steps to reduce the kind of price actions by the public sector you know individual companies and also the pay uh, public pay crackdown which is being planned by the UK government. On the Indian front, yes, we have observed some bit of uh, narrow range uh, trade being carried out for the Indian currency against the dollar. A break of US uh, DINR 8190 would be substantial as JK mentioned and can bring in some more INR strength. So let's see how things go about for the Indian markets as well. That's it for today, folks. We shall come back again tomorrow with another round of updates. Thank you so much for listening.